again, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew. My name is Shu Hui. And I'm Josue. And welcome to our fourth discussion of episode four of Shrouded Stories Beyond, Beyond the, the Great Wall. Wall. <laughs> <laughs> we decided just moments ago we would all say it at once this time, just to see what the effect was. Leave a comment. <laughs> <to> no, <say. laughs> no. Are they able to, what are we posting this? Can they leave comments wherever we post this? I don't think so. Well, oh. I mean, they can go on Instagram. Oh. Well, you know. It's going to be on YouTube. I forgot about that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is visual. As well. Oh, then you write those comments. I'm you write producer. up a flurry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's not necessary. It's okay. But yeah. okay. So, so we go to the fourth episode. Go to the fourth episode, which is kind of our big battle episode, um, essentially. It's Gong Gong and the fight and the battle. It's this is the this is it's suddenly it's you, just going over it again in preparation for talking about it. It feels. It's very action movie in its structure. It's surprisingly specific in the, the logistics of the battle. Because, you know, it's very easy to just say, oh, yes, they fought and these people won. But we get the blow by blow of, oh, here's the, here the army moves this way. Here um, this guy gets hit by water and so forth. I mean, is dare I ask if this is stylistic of other, you know, Chinese myths? Is the specificity usual? This one's a little bit special. Well, you know, normally when people are defeated, they don't go knock over a mountain. So you have to follow his uh, like emotional journey on how humiliated he was. And like, I just want to kill myself, but I want to bring tons of people along with me. Yikes. Yeah, that, that just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's very human for God. <laughs> yes. Big yike. Again, oh, 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 another point we're touching on a lot. Oh, these these very, very human gods. I mean, as far as the no, the elements at play here, um, as literally the elements at play here, fire and water, yeah. um, <laughs> we, we are super used to... Um, in our sort of Western understanding, thanks to Dante, thanks to a whole lot of um, uh, hellish iconography and imagery over the years, we associate fire with bad things, mm -hmm. with, with evil and with hell and so forth, um, and generally water with good things. Yeah. Here we, f at least for Western listeners, the script has flipped a little bit. Yeah. Um, and yes, and, and, and to that point, uh, a lot of civilizations are water-based. Like they go along the river banks and all that. So, and that's where culture and like and cultivation and starts to happen. Uh, so it, it it is very strange that to see this flip of the of the roles. Yes, yeah, so how do we account for this inversion? <laughs> Before I go into the water and the fire, I want to touch on uh, why I chose this, this version. Because there are tons of version of how this happened, but it's always ended with uh, Gong Gong knock over the mountain. Mm -hmm. But like the person that he was fighting could be Niwa, could be other people, mm. and there are just multiple versions. And I think at the time it was just two tribes fighting over conflict or over land or over resources. <laughs> Yes, you. <laughs> okay. Go. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, I love the concept of like two two tribes fighting and and this being a, there being a mythological consequence for that. Yes. Because uh, there that happened a lot in uh, in other places. Like two tribes fought. Whoever won, well, that god would maybe like usurp the 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 loser god's powers because that must be the one god that is actually good. Yeah. Because they help and like uh, we tend to see, especially in modern age, mythology is something apart. From the living world, mm -hmm. where in that part the people that actually believe in that it was very interwoven uh, between itself. Well, let's go back to why in this case water bad and fire relative good, rel relatively good, mm -hmm. is because um, like it long time ago when forest caught caught on fire, like after the fire's done, then human go back into the forest. All of the animals are cooked, and they taste way better. <laughs> True, I can attest to this. <laughs> yes, and um, it, it, like a lot of uh, other culture, we do start our um, life near water. Um, but fire, you can kind of escape, escape because like just leave. But water, you can cannot because you live always live by the water, and when it floods, it just mm. destroys the whole humanity. 
So we we'll, we'll come back to the flood story. <laughs> yes, it's, it was another flood myth that with uh, the waters roaring down. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, can we? I mean, even even like just gone gone, just like flooding the entire palace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. This this image, which you can, it's so just iconically myth to say a sentence such as. All the waters of the world just <laughs> gathered, which, which you know, I don't know exactly how to visualize that, but it's the sort of thing that's so grandiose and f- both fun to say and fun to hear, and just has this, this extra something about it. This, um, it's so imaginatively evocative. Mm. It's larger than yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. Aspect. Yeah. Just wanted to make that comment. <laughs> like, no, sorry. Um, but as yeah. uh, we were just talking a moment about this, the flood, the mm-hmm. flood. Um, which seems to be something that comes from this hole that's created in the sky. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I realized just recently that I feel like I'm not visualizing this correctly. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think you could help us out a little bit, uh, Shui, with the with the cosmology here and where this water is coming from? I'm gonna try. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, but below we have purgatory and hell, um, but like it's a different world. It has everything we have above us. Everything below us has it too. So similarly, we have the same similar world above us as well. And that water just happens to be a big... <laughs> okay, you're, you're chuckling. Bang Guo died, uh-huh. became the world. Uh-huh. But we have a world beneath the world. And we know a world above the world. Well, you, you remember Are there multiple she... Bang Guo's? You remember when he was like trying to open the world, he was... Holding would, up. Yeah, holding up the sky and uh, like yeah. But then when up. he when he died, it was like he became the mountains. He became the middle world. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it doesn't just like keep going up and keep going down like. At the time that he died, um, it it kind of stopped. Okay. Mm, I guess this is kind of a problem. I, we're going back in uh, in episode one uh, in our discussion. <laughs> this is kind of a problem that I guess. You can't really be avoided with creation myths in general, mm. just because there's always going to be the question of, well, exactly how did this come about? This isn't perfectly accounted for. Yeah. Um, but with the idea of the water coming down, mm-hmm. because I, I, a lot of us are familiar with sort of this like ancient Greek cosmology that's like you've got the, an underworld or like or like a Judeo-Christian Sheol kind of thing. And then you have, as you say, kind of this quote unquote mid world or our world. Mm-hmm. Then the like a firmament, a, a layer of water above it, and then the heavens. It, it feels weirdly similar in that way, if I'm picturing it correctly, to what we have in this story. I wouldn't say the firmament um, is water in this case. Mm-hmm. We have like maybe a layer of something blocking to go in between, but um, I think that water is one of the results of um, imbalance of the yin and yang. And also, it comes from the upper world, just a lake, sea, pound. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you look eager to say something. Oh, no, no. It's just like, I'm still like wrapping my head around like there being like, because like what you said made, made sense about Pangu being like the middle world. Mm. That makes sense. But like then, when, for example, like uh, Nuwana Fushi, uh, like ask the heavens, then we're talking about like above and, and like the, the young energy. Mm-hmm. That was above in the heavens, uh, and now we have an underworld. It's just like it, it's suddenly like the the cosmology, I guess, expanded way beyond like what I I, I thought we had, and uh, it's not that it's bad. Just like it's it's very interesting. Okay, try imagine the this heaven world is mm-hmm. like Asgard. Yeah. Oh, okay. Asgard, Midgard, kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then there's more force above that. What? <laughs> Still, try, uh, even though like uh, the deities living on the like a uh, heaven land, but they're still kind of limited and bounded by the force that balances yin and yang. So that's why like when the when you have like a uh, the both energies are imbalanced, mm. they may be born um, bad stuff. Okay, okay, okay. So like deities and all that are still like. Um operating beneath the rules of the like Bagua and the like yin and yang. Yeah. Uh, but there's something about that that is not dictated by those rules. That I don't know. I wish uh, I do. But it... Yeah, no, I'm yeah, I'm just like throwing <laughs> questions here because like the whole like concept of like another world asking for the heavens, water falling, mm-hmm. dragons coming in. 
it just like it, it kind of like ins inspires a lot more questions yes there's oh, oh my god I, I forgive me i hope i, I don't want to sound trivializing at all but we, i think we've all heard at some point of brandon sanderson's hard magic and soft magic systems um, yeah. in fantasy novels and so forth but um even in cases like this, it's it can be slightly applicable to mythology because feels like the I, probably even the word magic is not quite the right word to use for a lot of what's going on here, but it's soft rules we might say for a lot of how this happens. Like like uh, even with these two new characters on the scene, uh, Gong Gong and Juro, mm -hmm. we are. We can assume that okay, um, this this palace of light was erected, and these armies were gathered, and these uh, enmities were built, way off screen during the previous stories that we've been covering. So there's the imagination has to fill in gaps with a lot of this stuff. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of which, um, <laughs> great segue. Yeah, thank you. Very natural. But you can basically say "speaking of which" and then just change the subject to anything, anything. you want, <laughs> yeah. which is nice. But no, this is slightly relevant. Um, the monsters. We have a little bit of a monster invasion at the end of this. Yeah. When I was first reading it, my thought was, oh, they seem to be implied to be pouring from this hole that's been riven in the heavens and so forth. But it feels like now that we're talking about how these things are a little bit less literal and more to do with sort of chaos and, and uh, evil born of imbalance... It feels like maybe I'm misinterpreting exactly how these monsters came to be. No, no I, I think you're right because um, um, I, I guess chaos are mm. associated with a kind of like evil bearing a little bit. Um, I, I think it's just adding um, uh, varieties to species. Mm. I would consider like if you got chaos in you, you might be mutated into a something that. Perform so, differently, as you would without. So it's a very much a question of just like energy imbalance. Yeah. Of like, well, I guess that's what we define chaos as at the beginning. Like it's just like a mixture of the uh, yang and yin, and, and and like just like not balanced at all. Mm -hmm. So this these creatures are kind of like that. Then. Still, personal guess. Oh, we are not experts. <laughs> no, we need to have like a little just clip of us saying we're not experts all at once. That we can just use for all the time. I mean, as far as like the characters go in this thing, I have to wonder because, you know, this is our first time, uh, as we said, meeting these folks in. Uh, I can't promise uh, or I certainly don't know if this will be in any future episodes. Um, <laughs> but is this a rivalry we've got to watch out for? Between these two, are they kind of like known adversaries throughout multiple stories, or is this just one incident where they clash, Gong Gong and Chu Rong? I don't want to say for sure, okay. but but they sometimes they do come back, um, but never as a protagonist again. Oh, mm -hmm. it's sad to be relegated to minor character. But there are a lot of like uh, fan series and um, <laughs> related <laughs> stories that you can explore. <laughs> ah, ah, fan series? How do you mean? Just fan fiction. Oh, are there are there a bunch? Of, I hope there are like a lot of like fan animatics online of like this battle in particular, and then these. Uh, I mean, oh, that would be fun. Yeah. There I, are. There are. There are. Nice. This whole world I didn't even know about. <laughs> I'm such a fool. Did you? Uh, I know we touched upon this. Like, did you choose uh, to have uh, Jerome? <laughs> uh, did you choose to have uh, that as the main antagonist just because of uh, like just a, 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 because of the opposing quality to water? Yes, because like uh, like I said, one of the um, version Niwa was his um, rival, mm. and because we've touched on how she was creating human and helping human along the way naturally we'd fall onto her side um but i don't want to have this um like predetermined um kind of sight uh, when we walk into this new story so i chose the guy that never appeared and mm -hmm. have this opposing force to uh Gung Gung. so it, it's it's not necessarily um I, i'm not necessarily right on this because there are so many versions but this is just the one I picked to go with. Yeah, yeah. it's a good stylistic choice. Sure, Thank and you. I do love the this association of we we talked a little bit about f this version of sort of elemental alignment mm -hmm. being you know fire, 
good, water bad, at least as far as the characters are associated with. Um, but I didn't mention as much how now how warm and cozy and great I do think that association of fire good is. <laughs> fire good. I mean, it's it's which is pretty deeply baked into us as, as human beings. <laughs> like uh, not not just on just the base level of well we. It's slightly important for us in our civilization, fire. Yeah. But also in fiction, there's there are some positive associations. Like I'm, I, I'm sorry, I've got Lord of the Rings on the mind. I've got <laughs> Gandalf is very fire associated. Yeah, like there's a question of like renewal as mm-hmm. well, and like uh, we, uh, like Prometheus also gave fire to humans to be able to like um, you know build and cook and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cook, yeah, that's a big thing. I guess do we always stick with water bed? Not necessarily. Okay, so there's a, there's a shift that happens at some point. Yeah, because we are all nurtured by water. Seventy mm-hmm. percent. Mm. Yeah, seventy. I feel I feel so nurtured. <laughs> Just co- I'm constantly nurtured by my own. Oh, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 so uh, we, again, we we've come to the end of our predetermined questions uh, for yeah. this. Um, so now. I've, I, there are, you know, some things that we've uh, talked about that we didn't expect to go to. And I'll open the floor to any last, like, burning questions we m- might have before we adjourn. Cause I have questions. Yeah, go for it. No, just briefly. <laughs> Palace of Light. Okay. What a title. And it feels like a, an important location that might be returned to. Or is, the, is this the sort of thing that only occurs in this myth? And and we are just uh, going to be moving on to other pastures. And this wonderful set that with such an evocative name is just the staging of this particular battle. I'm sorry. It's just the background. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad I asked, but, though. But, but, like, most deities have their own choice of where they want to live. Yeah. Mm. So it's kind of associated with their ability, characteristic, um, it could come back, like. Mm. And is it just like a one deity per pa- per palace kind of deal, <laughs> or like do all like the light related deities are there? Are the roommates? Is our question. Are the roommates? <laughs> I mean, if you close, if you have close friends. Okay. Well, they can stay over, but they do like. They're just more abled human. Gotcha. <laughs> sure. Yes. I, I, I guess I, I only partially asked just because there was a feeling of siege during mm. the battle in the way that it's constructed. Well, to to that extent, you mentioned the whole tribe thing, mm-hmm. and like I can totally see this. Just like uh, these two tribes fought, the one tribe won, and they start writing the story, and they're like, "Man, we, we should like just like add these elements to school because like we clearly won because of our god." Uh, so we should just like write it like this and this and that, and just like embellish it just a little bit. So it does still keep like that's why maybe it goes like. This is all conjecture. That's why maybe it goes like very too specific to the details. So if like, oh, then they did this, then they did that. It was a siege. There was a a, a, a follow up uh, by the by the sieged, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but it's just gods because the gods are just humans but with more power. Yeah. Like, so, like you said, that that happens a lot in Chinese history as well. Like a lot of emperors have have to justify their uh, royalty. Mm. So you you find ways to write in a history book that. Ah, people believe me because this happened, and I had this shiny object. Yes, that's that's, that's all throughout human history. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so special. I've got a special bloodline, um, mm-hmm. and I am irreplaceable. Yeah. And so are my children and their children's children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's intense. Yeah, got a little real there. Um, well, in that case, I feel. Oh, I, I could honestly, I could keep going about some of like this rivalry just because. Honestly, by, by the, well, really quickly, I'll just say, by the time we get to, okay, Gong Gong's been defeated, he's fleeing, and then he turns around, and Junong's like, well, I beat you, but I'm coming after you anyway. Yeah. It's like, that was the one moment between Gong Gong's defeat and the breaking of the mountain, where I was like, you know, I'm, I, I feel like changing sides here, because this is, <laughs> this is kind of overkill. Well, I mean... If it's just a battle between the two deities, yeah, you kind of want to give mercy, but if you think it's a... Like fight between two tribes, you gotta grab the resource yeah. that you need. Yeah, it, it, oh, it yeah, mercy means that they'll come back. Yeah, true. It's true. 
So but it, it, does, it does kind of bring in the interesting question yeah. of like, was this just Gangan's fault? Yes. Or was it just like, it, was it just the action persecution at the end that, mm-hmm. that led to that? It's like that great episode of Doctor Who. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> no, it's, it's David. No spoilers, I just started watching it. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. damn it. I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay. We, we can talk about it. At some point, there'll be a great discussion crossover <laughs> between the Shrouded Stories and Doctor Who. But th- this brought the, the question of like the Bujo Mountain. Like, I, I guess that's just like Pangol's knee that just stuck there and just like kept the sky aloft. Or like, well, what, that was literally was what was keeping things in balance then. Mm-hmm. This is a question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, y- y- uh, mm. <laughs> Don't want to spoil, but like, um, uh, you probably do need more than one pillar to gotcha. hold up the sky. Gotcha. But this is one of the important ones. Okay, so I have like a foundational, like main pillar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it, <laughs> diff- difficult balancing act, of course. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm sli- that was beautiful. I'm slightly distressed that the audience is not going to know what episode I'm talking about of Doctor Who. Um, Just mention the episode. Oh, yeah. oh, it's, it, oh sure. Spoilers. It's David Tennant's first episode. Um, <laughs> that would be spoilers. <laughs> what? That's not a spoiler. Well, no, no, that's not a spoiler. Like, if you well, you know that David Tennant is going to appear and have a first I episode. I know, I know. Okay. I'm in the first season of the reboot. Oh, we just, be, just oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, this is yeah. completely relevant to the podcast. No, no. I, I, I think I've, I think I steer clear of spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Hi. So we've just we we've banished us away from the room because we want to talk more about this Doctor Who reference while it's still fresh in our heads. <laughs> Thank you. You're being very patient. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Basically, we. I'm all ears. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, just for your edification as much as mine, I wanted to mention that in reference to our fourth episode, the, the battle episode, in which uh, Jurong just chases down uh, with intent to destroy Gong Gong after the battle is essentially won. won. It's just like the Christmas episode that uh, David Tennant's introduced in. Have you seen this show? No, but overkill. Well, I'm not even done talking about it. Hold on. <laughs> Just very briefly, because the, the, here's the situation, uh, is that the doctor, you know, defeats the aliens, mm-hmm. as you do. Yeah. And so the aliens start flying away, mm-hmm. as you do. Um, but then the earthlings are all, you know, hey, wait a minute. These aliens, they might come back one day. So we're going to zap them with a laser and destroy them all while they're running away. Is there a um, problem with that? A little bit. It's framed as a moral quandary in the episode um, because the doctor essentially sent them packing, but then the humans just decide to kill them anyway. So it's viewed more as wanton murder rather than self-defense. Hmm. Which, which which brought to mind Jurong and Gong Gong and the, the chase at the end. Thank you all for watching <laughs> um, episode... <laughs> Four of shrouded stories beyond the great beyond no one. beyond the great <laughs> beyond, the great, beyond wall. the great wall. Um, we're thrilled to be chatting about these things we don't know anything about, <laughs> um, and we will be back in another episode, episode the fifth. It's gonna be a good one. There will be some <laughs> there'll be some plot resolution. We'll talk about that. Thanks for tuning in. Leave comments. Do the things, and take care. Right. See ya. Translation by Shu Hui Yao. English adaptation by Andrew Guerin. Music by Solwyn Locke. Sound effects by Shu Hui Yao and Josue Vera. Art by Ursula Young. Produced by Shu Hui Yao and Josue Vera. <laughs>